Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Jonathan, and welcome back to Money Talks, where we want to offer you financial information and meet you where you are financially so that you can stick to your budget, manage to pay off your debt, and begin to save on your path to building wealth. Today, guys, I want to talk to you about if you're underemployed, number one, how can you tell, and then what should you do about it? If this is your first time joining me here on the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button and you'll be notified every time I upload a new video. Well, guys, so often we talked about um, what to do, how do you budget on a low income, how do you... Uh, try to start to build wealth. And a big piece of building wealth and doing it in a comfortable fashion is making sure you're maxing out the dollars that you can make for your skills. And that's where underemployment occurs. So, so many people are underemployed right now, especially uh, due to the pandemic, or just they've always been there, they're paying a, earning a lower wage than their, actual, their skills are actually capable of making. Why are you doing it? First, that's the thing I want you to look at. Why are you sticking at that job? Is it because of uh, PTO? Is it because of other benefits? Is it because of what you believe it's offering to your life? Well, I would encourage you, whatever you think it's giving you, I want you to understand that you can actually get that plus the salary that you're worthy of in the marketplace and probably much more than you thought that you didn't realize was a benefit. It's really important that you understand where we in the U.S. have a unique ability that to earn a pot of really, really valuable income. And when you do that, that offers the opportunity that when you're looking at all these financial goals that you gotta hit, do, are you investing? Are you paying off debt? Are you putting money for kids? Are you traveling? Are you able to spend leisurely? Are you able to go out to eat? Are you able to give to your family? Are you able to give to your church? Are you able to give to other causes? One thing that really allows you to do that in a comfortable space where you're not always trying to, I'm a, take from this category to go put on the other one but just where you can equally balance everything is by growing your income it's a good solution to the problem yes managing is very helpful and that makes your dollars efficient but when you earn a, a good income for your skills and uh, really max out the skills piece that opens up a lot of opportunity in the form of time in the form of um uh, freedoms that allow you to put yourself in a more solid position. So that's why I want you to first ask yourself, why are you sticking at that job? Why are you doing what it is? Could it be that you just don't have time because of life? Maybe you're married, have kids, and, and now you're transitioning through uh, virtual learning to understand how you can get more income. The job search process is daunting and it's long and it's sometimes intimidating, but it's just do I have time and hours to dedicate to try to find this next position? What can you do? Well, that's the, the choices we all have to make. But ultimately, I just want you to know if you're not making the income you desire and you have a solid skill set and you garnered that and you put in time, earn those, learn those skills, you got the education and you're still not making those dollars, you're silently making a choice to stay where you are. And I would encourage you that don't be okay with that because you can give more and more doesn't mean that you're giving up pieces of your life because all the things that you might think is a benefit from one job can get that much or exponentially better when you go to the next because all like anything jobs really are more a dime a dozen you you go you serve and you get it and from that service you get value in the form of benefits and salary and pto and all that but at the end of the day if you're unable to meet the things that make you truly happy with all the effort and work that you're putting in then it's not really worth it to be at that job if you're if you're putting in a hard day's work a hard week's work every week but you're still not able to accomplish the goals the things that you want to do it's probably not really worth it for your time there and that's what I want you to do. Understand the value of your time because you've earned that value. Second, I want you to go to the marketplace. Like I just said, look at what somebody with your skills and your years of doing that gets paid for that job. One thing I used to look at is, or I put in the Money Talks group last week about income is, you're not making the income that you desire because of what you do. You're not making the income because of where you're doing it. Now, that answer and that quote has many different facets, but it, number one says the location. Should you be moving to a different state? Should you uh, be moving to a different industry? It could be multifaceted of what you're doing, but the fact is it's not the fact of what you're doing from a skill set standpoint. It's where you're applying that. 
And the thing is, just because you want to serve and you want to offer these opportunities and you want to take your talents to where it benefits people doesn't mean that you cannot get paid a fair wage. So number one, you want to think about you want to know why you're sitting where you're sitting, but then you also want to know that, hey, I can actually get more. Number two, I want you to think about where you're doing that skill set and what other avenues and what other industries can you apply your same skill set to make more money in a good, healthy fashion. Number three, where are you, what mentor or what track are you on to continually develop yourself to where you're fi- not only staying cutting edge with it, but you're fine tuning and ma- matured, fine tuning and maturing your skill set so that you can earn more money. That can come in the form of financial coach or any or business coach or a personal development coach. That can come in the form of a work mentor or a personal mentor. What work are you doing to continually educate yourself, not in the form of school, but development, professional development? Are you harnessing skills? Are you taking courses? Are you uh, practicing a la carte in different areas to fine tune those skills to really level up and really set yourself aside? Next, what relationships are you actually building to actually translate that? Are you aware and uh, have you made connections in the industry so that not only that, not a connection to always know for the next job, but a connection to be able to uh, know what's coming in the industry and know what opportunities the industry that you're in is starting to focus on so that you can be on the cusp of becoming a quality candidate. All these things can take you from point A to point B. And there are things that, yeah, at the end of the day, it's a time commitment. What are you willing to give for? If you give and even if you haven't been given time to your income, I want you to look at it this way. You, you've taken the time and you've been a good parent and you will be a good parent. But if you take some time and you focus on growing your income, it will return dividends, meaning you will get the increase. You may not get it in the next two months, but over a year time running at this pace, it will increase and it will likely increase largely than, more than what you were uh, ser- searching after. If you open yourself to where you were not just looking in your city, but you're looking at other cities and you're willing to kind of do a little bit of what most people won't do by moving, that can exponentially grow your income fast. If you're making connections all over and staying on cutting edge, that can put you in a position where you're aware of what's coming.